So let me share the screen. So you can see um, the distribution is like this. So we have six, 70 submission and then um, you can easily see uh, most of you get uh, get uh, almost full mark and uh, there's some uh, not full, but uh, overall I think it's uh, doing okay, pretty okay, but let's uh, Uh, let me let me go into that. So let's go into the question and then we'll have a break. And then uh, after the break, we'll go to the uh, continuous dis discussion. But let's uh, let us uh, go into the uh, question. Okay, so quickly. Um, can you see the screen? Yeah. Um, so the first question is uh, all that simple. It just gives you a uh, distribution of a, uh, right? It's a, oh, this typo. Uh, yeah, just wait. Someone asked me the question, the type of, uh, yeah, let me, let me go back, check again. Um, so, uh, let me go question by question. Okay. I mean, it's okay. I mean, your question, but I just wait until I done because I'll uh, just do it part by part. So here we have X, right? We have zero, one, and two. And, uh, the probability of X is 0.3. 0 0.2, 0 0.05, okay? So what is expected value of x, right? Would be value of x multiplied by 0 0.3 plus run 0 0.2 plus 2, 0 0.5, right? And this is zero, this is 0 0.2, this is one, so it's 1.2. So the answer is E. Okay, I hope that is not a problem for this one. Um, is it okay with the first question? Yep. Um, then let's go to the second one. Um, so the same, but we asked the variance, right? So that is rather simple because we know the expected X is 1.2, right? So the variance right, of x will be 0 minus 1.2 square plus probability 0.3, right? 1 minus 1.2 square probability 0.2 and uh, 2 minus 1.2 square uh, 0.5, right? And at the end, you end up with uh, uh, Do the calculation is uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.76. So the answer is B, okay. Um, I hope that's okay. I, I, I guess there's no, is it okay for this one? Is it good? Good. So the next one is about some linear property, property of uh, the expectation. So we have uh, pi of one kilogram and us 100, right? So expect that X, right, will be 0 0.2 times one plus two times 0 0.3 plus five times three times 0 0.5, right? That's 0 0.2 plus 0 0.6 uh, plus uh, uh, 1.5. Right, then it's 2.3. Then what we ask is uh, 100x, right, which is 100x by the x. So it's 230. So the answer is C. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. So. 
Then question four, the simple is MP, N times P then is A, so it's C. Binomial, we know, we know it's MP, so that's a, And um, question five is again, just the formula NP times one minus P. So that's why it's uh, 10 times uh, point eight times point two, it's one point six, right? So because just recall this is a variance of X is NP one minus P. So 10 times point eight times point two is six point six. Okay, just the formula directly. I hope that's okay. And um, the next question um, would be the following. So someone asked me whether there's a typo. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's a typo in the answer. Yes, uh, it should be point two. So um, has a binomial distribution, right? So binomial, right? We know binomial the uh, binomial, right? With n is four, p is point two. So we're strictly greater than one. So which asking probability that x is bigger than one, right? But we know it's going to be one minus probability that is x less than equal to one, right? And let's calculate this guy, okay? Probability x less than equal to one. By now we only have two choices. Either you have zero or one, okay? And zero means is uh, n, C zero, right? Point two raised to the power zero, right? And uh, point four raised to the power four, right? And then one will be four C one, point two raised to the power one, and point, so this is point eight, point eight raised to the power three, okay? So then uh, you can calculate turn out to be uh, point one a. Sorry, it's top point eight. So it's a uh, point eight one nine two. So then one minus point is uh. 0.1808, okay? So the answer is B. Is that okay? No. Yeah, thank you for uh, keep home for telling me that there's typo in the in the, uh, the solution. Yeah, is there any question? Is that any question for this one? Is that okay? Uh, especially kid home. Is it okay? Um, then let's go to the next question. Um, for this one, uh, let's go. Past history, so 40% have own pad and a student of five, so we select. Right, so here you can see, uh, actually someone asked, right? How do we distinguish whether this is a binomial or a high hood geometric, right? But this one, uh, we draw the first student, uh, the likelihood of uh, a student who get a pair is 40%, right? The second one again is 40%, right? So you're basically saying this 40% is a staying constant. So right? that's why it's independent trial. So this is a, binomial distribution, okay? So the same n is three here, right? 
and then P is uh, 0.4 because the getting the student, uh, getting the student who get a pet is a success. So we are asking a probability that X is equal to three, exactly three. So that is just uh, five C3, right? 0.4 raised to the power of three, okay? And one minus 0.4, Ways to power uh, n minus three, just two. Okay, so turn out is to be 0.2304. Okay, so just pick up the closest one. Is that okay with this one? Question seven. Any question? Oh, n is five. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Fence. Yeah, n is five. C. Yeah. Thanks. Oh. Any question? Is it okay? Is that okay? Um, okay, good. Um, so the next one, uh, question number eight, that is easy. Um, he said the Poisson distribution with mean 10 event per hour, the variant is also 10 because that is a special thing of Poisson is the mean equal to its variance. Okay, so just, uh, just no need to do anything further, just uh, one step. Okay, uh, I hope there should not be any issue. Uh, number nine is a little bit trickier. Um, so a number of protests in a small city has fun of Poisson, they're choosing of 10 protests a day. Okay. What's probability of eight or nine a day? Okay, so that is fine. So it's a day, so it's no problem. So we say Poisson, the mean is lambda 10. Okay, so what it's asking is probability that is x equal to eight or x equal to nine. Okay, but then this will be equal to probability x equal to eight plus probability x equal to nine. The reason why I can write this because it's not possible to have x equal to eight and nine. Okay, the join is empty. Okay, so that's why the, the uh, union will be the sum. Okay, because you might you suppose to minus x equal to eight and x equal to nine, but this is zero. Okay, and for this part, right, that will be e to the power now negative 10 right 10 to the a a factorial and for this guy will be e to the negative 10 10 to the power 9 and 9 factorial you add them up okay uh, this would give you something close to 0 0.24 Is that okay? Is that okay? Good. Okay. 10, okay. 10 is a 999 call, uh, has poison, uh, mean four in 30 minutes, okay? And what we're asking is uh, two or more in an hour, okay? So mean of four in 30 minutes, right? Four in 30 minutes, right? Then in an hour, what's the mean? Then it's A, okay? because uh, you assume uh, independence, right? So that's why 30 minutes and there's a double of the one hour, it's still poison, right? So the question is asking, what's the probability that uh, X two or more, right? So it's equal to two or more, right? But then it's one minus probability that X less than two, right? And x less than two have two things x equal to zero and 
x equal to one, okay, and x equal to zero will be e to the negative power a, right? x to the zero power zero, zero factorial plus e to negative power a, a to the power one over one. Okay, when you calculate that is very close to 0.996, then that's why I pick E. Oh, someone asked me, probably someone has asked me uh, the typo here. Yes, this typo. Yeah, thank you. Uh, any question? Any question? Is that okay? Is that okay? If okay, then can I have some response? Okay. Um, so this one is uh, we're clear here. We say without replacement. Okay. So warehouse contain 20, 20 box, six are full, 14 are empty, okay? Five box are randomly drawn with no replacement. What is probably exactly two full boxes are drawn, okay? So here we have 20, so N is 20, okay? And we call full box, so full are the successful, so A is equal to six, right? And of course, M minus A is 14, right? Let's see. And you're going to draw on five box, okay? What's probability that uh, is, is two, right? So that's probability that X equal to two, right? Will be six, uh, six C two, okay? And 14, uh, C3, which is M minus X, right? This is M minus A, and this is 20 C5. Okay, turn out to be, uh, okay. So that's why the answer is B. Is that okay for this one? Any question? Is that okay? Um, okay, someone asked, okay, this is okay for this one. Then we go back to the previous question. Someone asked me with a typo for the calculation for x equal to zero. Oh, x equal to one, I guess. Oh yeah, should be one. Yeah, that's a typo. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, but the answer should be right. Yeah. Thank you, Kaka. Yeah. Thanks for reminding me, but uh, I think the answer is correct and I write the screen is correct. Yeah, but thanks for letting me know. Yeah, that's very good. So the last one, possibly is the, should it be okay too, is uh, because you can see without replacement that remind you is going to a hypergeometric, right? So it's just a playing card, probably the standard one, the deck you, you know is a, uh, 52 card, right? So N is 52. And then uh, we select five card. So N sample size is five, okay? We consider red as successful, okay? Red, uh, half of red, half of them are black, right? So A is 26. N minus A is uh, 26 two, right? So X is two. M minus X is three, okay? So then probability that X equal to two will be NCX, so this is five C2. Oh, sorry. Is 26 C2, ACX, and the N minus A, CN minus X, okay? Over 
NCN 52 over 5. Okay, so it's 0 0.32513. Okay, so something like somewhere here. Okay, so that's the end of the question. I hope uh, many of you get most of them correct. You may make some mistake, uh, but I guess this is uh, somewhat the basis that uh, you know, and then uh, if you don't get it correct, then probably you want to revise. So uh, you take take the slope, uh, we took a look at the slope, the notes again. Um, so we'll break of uh, 50 minutes and then we come back and then we will uh, talk about the uh, continuous distribution. In the meantime, you may ask me any uh, question during the break. Okay, so have a break until, I think the break until, uh, break until uh, 133. No, no, 23, yeah. 15 minutes break. So Um, someone asked uh, why the variance formula, right? We, this is why we have this particular formula, right? Why this is true, right? So now let us, uh, we can prove this formula indeed. It's not something uh, completely crazy. So let's try to see why this is true. So variant of x, okay, start from the very beginning, right, the definition is x minus e of x, right, and then square, right. So now here, inside a square, so it's a minus b square, right? So it can be a square minus 2ab plus b square, okay? So that means we can have written as x square minus 2x, x better value of x, okay? Plus x better value of x square. Is that okay, Henry? And then 
you will see, okay, this is a linear thing, right? So we can write this. Minus, right, this guy. And this guy. Is that okay, Henry? So here, expected value is a constant, right? So can take out. So you can have two also can be taken out. So it's two, expected for x. And you left expected value of x. Okay. And this is a constant. Expected constant is by itself. Right? So times together is x squared. Right, so it's minus two square of expectation. So plus, so what you're left is negative. Okay, so this is the proof. So can you see that? Um, someone asked me where can we get more practice? Uh, I recommend you try to do the actually you can pick up any textbook that would be uh that would be doable uh or if because we have the official textbook so you can just pick up the textbook um they are answered at the end so you should try those um first for you to understand whether you understand or not and uh there are many 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 questions online so you can try those uh that would be the easiest way to uh to for practice i'm not sure i answer your question uh, uh wait is it is it something okay and oh by the way you will be have a homework too so then you have exercise on that yeah you will have homework too so you will have some exercise i assign some of the question indeed Ah, uh, that is uh but I didn't want yeah, I didn't want to say it before you finish homework one. But uh I can give uh, I mean I may I can I may give earlier homework two for you, you can try to work on those. Yeah. So probably I'll assign something in the textbook uh, so that you can have uh, some practice over the uh, uh probably do it uh yeah, but I, I, I pick up some questions that we can do it. We can do it. Okay. So two more minutes, then we will um, work on the uh, our uh, go back to this. We we'll talk about the uh, continuous random variable.
One more minute, then we'll resume. Um, in case you want me to ask a question, then uh, feel free to do it. Sorry, Professor, I want to ask a question. Yes, please. Um, I, I saw from the PowerPoint slide of Excel that we can actually calculate um, the Poisson distribution and binomials through Excel. Yes. Um, but I'm not quite sure about the formula of, um, of the Excel formula because when I input Poisson dis uh, distribution and then the third, uh, the third place should be true or false and true represents CPF, but I'm not sure whether it is smaller than or equal to or greater than and equal to. Smaller than or equal to. Uh, cumulative is smaller than or equal to. The same as the CPF is the one we define in the, in the slide number seven. It's less than or equal to. So it means that Excel manually set it as uh, smaller than or equal to. That is the standard word we call cumulative is smaller than and equal to. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, no more question, then uh, we will go forward. So after the quiz, I think you, I'm sure you pretty much know about random variable, right? There's a discrete, right? There's counting. Um, that is something that is often arise in practice, so the discrete. Um, for continuous, I would say it's more arise in uh, the later part of this uh, uh, class, or if you do finance, then you probably know uh, Sometime later you learn the price is usually modeled that as a contest random variable. And uh, let, that, let me give you some idea of uh, the continuous. Why you see there's a little bit math here. So that's why we don't go too deep. Uh, we just scratch the surface and that will be sufficient for our purpose. So uh, you see when we define, when you describe a on this random variable, uh, you would start from the cumulative probability function okay, instead of the uh, probability distribution function. Okay, later you will see why that's the case. Um, the reason is uh, continuous means you cannot count all of them. Uh, can you see the slide? Sorry, I didn't. I forgot to ask. Uh, can you see the slides? Yeah, good. So, um, because when you remember when you discrete, right, you can always draw a table, right? X equal to one, two, then what's probably X is equal to what probability, those kind of thing, right? And, and the fact that now you have continuous means that you cannot count, you cannot list them all, right? You cannot be list at all. So uh, that means that by any, give you any number would not be working. Okay, so you need to give a, a bunch, a continuum of numbers, right? Or interval in general, right? Give an interval, then you can say something, okay? So that's why instead of this, you focus on F, right? This is probability that's X less than equal to, that's called the cumulative one, right? Some of you mentioned Excel, just ask now, but uh, the Excel basically, uh, sometimes ask whether you, when you have continuous, actually, all, you always ask you to, to give you this one, the cumulative one, okay? And this is the same thing, but remember when we have this, right? When we have a um, discrete, right? Then it's a summation uh, of the probability x equal to x, right? Uh, but now we cannot use summation uh, because it's continuous, so it will be integration. Okay, so that is the uh, idea. Uh, of course, uh, our class is not about integration. Uh, we will not ask you to op to do the operation of integration, but uh, some of the proof require some uh, integration, but we will not be asked to do it. So don't worry about that. So that is uh, the integration, but you can imagine the summation, okay? Is not there? Uh, wait, is the case? Uh, it's just random variable in the slide. Is it the case? Let me check.
Oh, should be there. Just at the end. Yeah, just coming. Uh, it just continue from the this this script. Uh, is that okay? Uh, Wi-Fi. Um, I, I I look at the blackboard. Is there? Yeah, it just continue from what we have before. Yeah. So now you see that we have the F, right? So it's a cumulative one, right? So um, sometimes it is useful and often this is often used. Uh, we will take the derivative of this. So it's called the den probability distribution or probability density function. So it's called density. Okay. And why density? Uh, it borrow the word from physics. Okay. Okay. Because you integrate density becomes something called mass that corresponds to this quick one. But uh, we don't really worry about that. Um, the reason why we talk about that because uh, uh, if you learn more then basically this is the primitive, then you just type to integrate, okay? And, uh, and this, when you integrate, then it's related to the probability. That's how they're related, okay? So uh, later you will see uh, what are they, but when you see integration or differentiation, right? So basically, uh, you can plot this f of x, right? And say area a and b, okay? If you try to see probability x between a and b, okay? Will be this area, okay? If you really won't be serious, then this is the way, right? Okay. And this is equal to F B minus F A. Okay. So that is the probability. And oh, this area, right? If you learn if you learn math, then this is the uh something that you know. But if you don't know, then this is uh something new to you, it's area under curve. Um, and that usually means uh, when you have continuous distribution, uh, the probability that x equal to a particular value will be zero because it will be an empty area, right? Because asking probability that f equal to a particular number, right? Then that is almost impossible, right? Because the area is very small, okay? So, uh, that is a consequence of a uh, this random variable is uh, equal to a particular number will be small because you allow the number to uh, vary a lot, particular number would be very unlikely. Okay, a um, little bit more abstract, I understand because, uh, but the thing is we can't go too deep because uh, no, we're in the B school, so, uh, but hopefully for those who know math, you know what I'm saying, but those who are not math inclined, don't worry. When we go to a example, then you, you'll be more clear. Okay, uh, any question before we go ahead? Okay. Um, So here is the um, expectation and the and the variance. There's no no difference, uh, but you just replace the summation x p x right by its integration counterpart here. Okay, so there's nothing new here, right? Same for this guy is also expectation y minus y right and if you if you do the summation, right, it will be something like this, right? Right, so the same thing here. But now we replace by the integration, okay? Um, and these are the formal definition, okay? So uh, there is uh, nothing but just change things from uh, integration. Okay, I'm not going to uh, 
deal with all this because this is formal definition are uh, not really uh, I know I cannot say they're not useful, but uh, for our purpose, we don't touch them that often. Okay, except for to give you some proof. Okay, and there's definition. So uh, there's nothing to explain, but just to realize. So um, here we will tell you um, the basic thing here is uniform, uh, exponential. Exponential actually is related to Poisson. Okay. And the normal is something that we will use very often. Okay. This is something very, very, very important. Okay. And the chi square is just normal square. Okay. And the student T is uh, somewhat related to, uh, is a standard norm, is a normal over a chi square. Later you will see, I mean, as your square root anyway. Um, and uh, F later you will see is uh, related to uh, two ratio of two chi square. Okay, but uh, we'll define more properly. And you will later see this uh, chi square student T and F. Uh, these three are very useful in the second half of this class. And we'll be using it again, 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 again. Uh, normal, we we'll use it again. So exponential and the uh, uniform, uh, we only see this in this class and probably we don't see it again. But the last four, we will see again, again, again. Okay, so that would be our common, uh, our usual friend. Okay, especially in, this is a normal and student T will be the thing that we will use very, very often. They are uh, one of the best friends. Okay, but uh, let's, let's go ahead. So let's start with the uniform. So uniform, we have some structure. So suppose uniform is between A and B, okay? A number, of course, A and B are less than infinity, okay? And what is the density function here, okay? And, the, okay, this is from, a to B, and this is just a line, okay? And this line, the height, other than that, or maybe I use other color, okay? This will be this. Okay? And the height of this is just one over B minus A. Uh, the reason why is because this area must be one, right? Because we mentioned that uh, the area under this curve F, the density function will be the probability, okay? So this area is uh, uh, B minus A times this must be one. So this must be one over B plus B, B minus A, okay? So if you are going to, someone asks you, what is the probability that uh, X is between say, uh, uh, C and D, right? Then you will just integrate from C to D, this F, right? Suppose C and D here, right? But again, remember we don't use integration. That is simple because uh, this area, right? This area under the curve, this area, right? And you know how to carry area, right? Would be just D minus C as the base, right? The height will be one over B minus A and just the rectangle. Okay. Uh, but just now you know uh, this is the thing. And the uh, distribution function, the cumulative one, will be integration, okay? Uh, from A to X, right? But remember, we don't do integration in this class, so how to prove this will be just uh, A up to B, right? 
and the height is uh, one over b minus a, right? And we're asking the probability that is up to x. Suppose x is here, okay? Right? So then what you're going to do is this area, right? This area, the base will be x minus a, right? x minus a, right? Because this air, this, this is x, right? So the distance will be x minus a. The height will be one over b minus a. So that's why we multiply. This is the area under curve. And um, the mean will be a plus b over two. So this the, is the middle area, the middle, right? a plus b over two. And the variance you see will be b minus a squared over 12, okay? Um, this is something I'm going to prove, uh, but I will be, the proof is not difficult, just some uh, calculus, but uh, if you don't know the calculus, that's okay. I just, uh, will be quick here. So don't worry about that. I mean, you are doing, you're not required to do calculus, but, uh, but I just show you uh, how we get those, okay? But uh, don't worry about the calculus if you, I'm not following. So here you will see if A and B have a range of one, so that will be one because this area is one, right? Suppose you, because the area, this is one, okay? And if the, if the number is between one and five, right? Then, uh, right? Here is four, right? So that's why it's one over four here, okay? Because multiplied area become one. This area below is the probability, okay? So that's how you describe the continuous distribution. You give me the curve, the area represents the probability, okay? So that is a uh, rather, this is a convenient way to tell you what is, uh, when the random variable can assume a continuum of numbers, okay? So let me very quickly go uh, to the proof. Uh, I'm not going into too much detail because a uh, little bit rather complicated, but um, so here you integrate, right? Because F is, uh, F is uh, one over B minus A, right? So you integrate this and it's a constant you can take out, right? So that's why it's one minus B over A and integrate A to B x dx, right? And if you recall, this is the way standard way x will be x squared over, will be x squared over two, okay? B a, okay? So that's why it's one over b minus a, b squared minus a squared over two, okay? And that will give you b plus a, B minus A over two, so they cancel out, okay? So that's why you have the, F, the average will be uh, sum of the two endpoint over two, okay? For those who don't know integration, it doesn't really matter. Uh, this is just a technical part to try to show you uh, why the mean is like this, okay? If you don't, you can just remember it. There's no harm to do so, okay? Just remember will be fine for those who, uh, who don't know it, okay? And uh, the next part will be, um, um, check the second moment, okay? And again, we check the second moment, we do the variance, okay? So for those of you who don't follow, I try to be quick because uh, this is something not really Again, this is constant, you can take out. So you can integrate this guy, okay? The integration of this will be x3 over three, a, b, okay? Will be, sorry, b. Integrate b over, okay? Sorry. So how you get this one, because it's a general formula, is 
you in you when you integrate this right is equal to uh x n n plus one plus c okay but anyway uh if you haven't learned integration uh that was uh, something that uh little bit trickier for you but if you learn it then it should be not a big deal so b3 minus a3 over 3 okay and this guy can be written as b minus a right b squared plus a b plus a squared over 3 okay but remember we have b over a there so we cancel out okay so that's why we have this guy is that okay uh, if you don't you haven't learned if you don't know the calculus then it's uh, it's fine just give you for those who know i hope that's okay um quickly the end will be uh, this is the something we have right and this is something we got in the first step and um, just do some simple algebra I'm not going to do it you'll be uh, this number um, so that that's why you have end up in a where real number 12 because we have three and this is a square of two so that's why we end up with this number but I'm not going to uh, continue to discuss this because just uh, try to give you some idea what the number can be okay um i guess i should go to the exponent so that would be more fun okay so why we care about exponential okay exponential is basically the idea of poisson coming from but we don't try to prove it today um remember poisson is asking you this following right is a limiting case of binomial right you cut the interval into very small interval right then each interval right we have an event we call it p right so there will be there will be many of n right and we call np is lambda, right? When p is very small, right? n go to infinity, but np is still positive number, okay? And uh, in that case, uh, what you expect, right? This is Poisson, right? And exponential is asking, in this context, when will be the first event happening? Okay, suppose the first event happened here. Okay, what's the time until it happened? Okay, so it means how many trial you need before your success. Okay, of course, this trial means the time. Okay, so that's why you can see the support, the possible value come from zero to infinity. You may, you may have somewhat, but you may never have, but that's the idea okay is to model the time when things happen okay so basically you're asking when in the example when a protest would happen when a 999 call would happen okay where when the rare event will happen okay so it's more exponential you're asking how many of air event happen then there will there will be poison but when asking uh, when the time until the next event happen will be exponential I hope that's clear. So that's why they're closely related to each other. Um, so the area is looks like this uh, funny function, okay? We will call lambda e is again uh, 2.713 to the negative lambda x, okay? So that's why you can see it's not too much different uh, from the Poisson, as you can, you might expect because this is closer to the Poisson, so that's why you can have the e here, okay? And here, if, uh, uh, if you give a negative number, then it will be zero, okay? So that's it, what it is. And um, the display function, okay? 
will be given by integration, okay? And uh, to calculate this, you have to put the lambda inside, right? So you, you write x e negative lambda y, right? Will be d lambda y, okay? And uh, okay? And then because in the e, pop, you learn it it's just by itself, right? So uh, that's why you have this one, okay? And then you put zero and one, then you have this guy, okay? But I don't want to go into detail integration. So basically, if you know, then it is not complicated. But uh, otherwise, it will be uh, the area will be given by this, okay? Uh, you can forget at the uh, Declaration, but this is uh, the part that uh, you know. And of course, the most important part is the mean and the variance. That would be something you care. So it's just one over lambda, okay? This is two over lambda square, okay? So this is different from Poisson, okay? But um, this is interesting enough, okay? Okay, so one over lambda is the time that event will happen. Okay. So uh, let me show you the F. It looks like this. It's a decreasing function. Okay. Um, because you will see the Poisson event, right? So that's why is uh, it will have the event will happen sometime, right? So it's more likely that uh, the event happened earlier. Uh, the later, okay. So for the uh, blue one, right? So this one, okay. The mean of this is one over lambda, so it's two. So this is the mean time, right? And for lambda smaller, the mean will be larger, right? Because one over lambda is five. Okay. So uh, hopefully you will see how this graph looks like. Okay. But of course, uh, let us go into the uh, go into the application. There's something we care, right? Uh, we know the Poisson. So basically the Poisson, but just the time now. So suppose the time for next customer to arrive for no exponential with mean uh, 20, okay? So here to be careful, mean 20 actually means one over lambda is 20, okay? okay. So that means lambda is one over 20, okay? What's probability that uh, arrive within the next 10 minutes? And next 10 minutes will be x less than 10, okay? So this f of 10, okay? And then we just apply the formula, right? Which is one minus uh, the formula, if you still recall, is e to the negative lambda x, okay? So that's why it's one e negative one over 20 times 10, so this is how we arrive the answer. Okay. Any question? Um, because the mean is one over lambda. Okay, very good question. The mean is lambda minus one over lambda. Is that okay, Peter? Just 20 and put it in the right, left hand side. Yeah. Any further question? If no, then I just very, very, very briefly go over the proof because I don't I don't think the proof will be uh, 
very important for this case because uh, not everyone have done with the uh, calculus, but I just highlight some of the proof here. Actually here we will require what we call a technique is called integration by part. For those who don't really follow. Okay. And what we are doing here, uh, what will be actually I'm doing is I will write this uh, as e to the Sorry, what I do is I do D negative lambda X negative uh, X, okay? I will write this, okay? And then I do the uh, integration by part, so which means it's negative X E negative lambda X, right? And I uh, minus this guy and minus x, so there's a plus. Okay, so that's how I arrive at this one. Um, but anyway, and here plug in, you get one over lambda. Okay, I'm not going to detail because I guess it's uh, not worth the class time to discuss the detailed integration. Okay, if those of you who are interested, uh, you can just study on your own and you still question does ask me. Okay, I just highlight what is what the integration skills I'm using here. And here to get the x squared again, uh, I use by part. Okay, integration by part. Do it once. Okay. And here, once you do by parts, and here is the mean of x. Okay, this is mean of x. So that's why I get one over lambda. Okay. So I have here, I have two integration by part. Okay. I want to highlight this point and this is standard, this is by definition. Okay. So I'm not, not going to go into detail for this uh, math because I guess it's not the best use of the class time. So in case you still, you for those who are eager to learn, so try to work it out by yourself. I think the steps are very clean and clear if you, in any case, you want to know, just ask me, or we can discuss after class because I guess that would be uh, saving the class time for a more important thing. Um, so here, I think that would be, we can discuss this one. This is easy because this will prove uh, two over lambda square and this one over lambda square. Okay. That's why one over lambda, uh, one lambda square. Okay. So um, that would be the uh, outcome. So for the last uh, five minutes, I want to go to the um, normal distribution. That would be the, uh, is there a question? Uh, that would be the main key of this class. Okay. Of course, we will be revising, keep doing it again and again with normal because that would be something that we keep uh, working on. Uh, so someone asked me about the project. I guess uh, we don't have time today, so probably we'll talk about this uh, next next class about the project. I think because uh, this week uh, is the first week for those who just joined the class. I guess uh, I, I allow you some time to familiarize your classmate. So we we'll talk about this uh, next week about your homework. So about your about our sorry about projects. So before we end our class and you enjoy the nice weekend, so let's uh, learn about normal distribution. So this is the normal. Uh, actually, is invent another name. It's called Gaussian distribution. And for those who learn math or know some his history of uh, mathematics, no Gauss is. Uh, one of the very important mathematician. And uh, indeed there's a program in statistics called Gauss. Okay, so just to honor him. And this is Gaussian distribution is what we call the bell shape all the time. 
So it's called the bell curve. Okay, somewhat we call bell curve. And this bell curve appears so frequent, so that's why it's normal. Normal he means is so normal is norm, right? Norm is uh, so commonly seen is norm, right? So that's why uh, we call the most common distribution. Okay, and different from exponential, um, this is can assume any number. Okay, so that's why it's so convenient. Is anything negative, anything positive, it will work. Okay, the probability density function. Okay, this one is somewhat like okay, not easy to understand. Okay, and you probably need not remember this, but this is the this shape. And this different from before, uh, you have two parameter, mu and sigma, and turn out to be this is actually the two parameter we need is just the mean and these uh, variance of this uh, distribution. So that's why we call mu and sigma, right? We can call A and B, but turn out it's very convenient, it's mu and sigma square. Uh, that turned out to be a nice one, okay? And um, you can see there's a pi, there's a e, okay? Uh, it's very complicated, okay? We're not going to do any, I don't think we'll do any proof uh, on this part, okay? It's uh, so much complicated, okay? And the integration of this, okay, turned out to be, you can't write anything, okay? That is not equal to anything, okay? Cannot write. So here we, we will rely on computer okay, to give us a solution. Okay. Basically, if this is X, right, we rely the computer to tell us what's the area of this. Okay. This is F of X, right? But uh, it's very difficult to calculate by hand. Okay. So that's why here uh, everything will be relegated to the computer. Okay. Uh, or Excel spreadsheet, or uh, you can use uh, any uh, table later, we call the Z table. Okay. Um, but what you need to remember the normal mean with the mu uh, wearing sigma square. Okay. Just two parameter there. And it's related to this too, but uh, uh, it's kind of complicated, but uh, anyway, we don't really need to remember all this. I mean, we just remember the two thing, the two parameter, describing the distribution that would be the mu and sigma square. Okay. And uh, let me give you the property and uh, tell you to look at the C table before I answer, maybe overrun a little bit. I'm sorry, but uh, I hope I let's end with something a little bit more. Um, so here with the green one will be the mean zero sigma one. Okay. And the blue one will be having the same sigma. Okay, so that's why the same shape, but the mu will move likely four to move left to the four. And the other one have the same mean as the green one. Okay, but sigma is four, so it's much more flat. Okay, so that's how the mu and sigma change the shape. It's always a bell. Mu affect where they are. Sigma tell you how flat the bell is. Okay, so because mu is the mean, so determine the location, okay? And sigma, right? Determine how they spread out, right? Actually, it's with the kurtosis, but, uh, but anyway. And remember the normal, the kurtosis is always free. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Can you speak louder? Sorry? Um, I, I can't hear, but I mean, if you can, but... sorry. Uh, anyway, I mean, so let me quickly, um, finish it. I mean, uh, talk about the property and then we can end the class. So let's be quick. So what we call transformation or our call, we call standardized. So don't worry, we'll be quickly and soon standardized. Okay. So it just 
minus is mean divided by sigma will be called normal CO1, okay? And um, that's why, that's what we do. For every normal, you minus is mean and subtract the standard deviation give you the standardized normal. And this is called the Z table, okay? And depend on what table you read, uh, this is the something we'll be doing. And turn out to be, this is symmetric about zero, okay? So that's why they just give you more than zero, okay? Uh, and you don't really uh, need to be uh, worried about that because they're symmetric, okay? And uh, I think I would just almost end here, but I just give you a glimpse of the uh, uh, of what we want to do. Of course, we'll do it again in the next class. So basically, is Z follow a standard normal and new Z table. You can look at the table. You can quickly figure out this number, this number, and this number. Okay, because of the fact that uh, they're symmetric about zero, so everything can be done quickly. But I guess I should end here. I will overrun it quite a bit. Uh, but we will be finishing uh, this, this set of slides in the next class, and then we'll discuss something in the, about the project next class. So I've overrun. Uh, I stay around answering the question you may have. Uh, when can the midterm date be confirmed? Uh, there's no midterm, there's only one text. Uh, will be sometime in November because the question is we don't we are not sure whether we resume the class, so there's a issue here, and uh, I think there's a uh, probably I will I will be sending out. I think it will be something like uh, first I guess it will be first day or Tuesday depends on what we do we will be doing it at the night to make sure because of two sections so probably will be. Uh, uh, will be will be on the uh, first first day night uh, to make to make both group to do it together. Uh, uh, I think we'll be doing uh, open book because it's very hard to make sure it's closed book. So we will be online because uh, we'll be doing an a online online uh, reading exercise. Uh, I guess that be something like. Well, the question style will be more or less like uh, you see the quiz, but it's a little bit more difficult than the quiz, of course. Uh, but uh, the quiz is more like more straightforward, right? So the uh, the test will be a little bit less straightforward, but it will be some somewhat along that line. So I will give. I mean, you will see this homework one. Then probably you you can guess what kind of. Uh, difficulty level you would be facing. I guess that would be more uh, easier to under, to see. Probably after you see the homework one, then probably you can, you will know more exercise, revision exercise. Is that okay? So, I mean, as I said, I mean, uh, already over. So uh, thank you, bye-bye. And then I'm, uh, I'm staying around to answer any question you might have. So enjoy the weekend. Uh, so. Uh, case analysis in the well, case analysis is same as uh, same as the question, just more reading comprehension, right? So probably might be some question, but I haven't I haven't decided yet. I need to see how you do your homework and your quiz to decide how difficult the text would be. So it's a uh, I need to check. So I cannot confirm you at this moment, but uh. It really depends on how well you guys are doing. Yeah. Sorry, can I give you a confirm answer at the moment? Uh, oh yeah, I think there might be a typo. Yeah. Uh,
Notice, ah, uh, just the page 54 is right. 